Johnny Chapman, better known to us as Johnny Appleseed, was a wandering adventurer who befriended everyone he met and was always busy planting apple trees, helping others, preparing for his next journey. He knew all the ways of the forest, the plants, the wild animals, and how nature played out all four seasons. A friend to all and a stranger to none, he passed along the news from village to village as he traveled, always stopping to plant apple trees whenever he possible. Johnny always dressed in a carefree manner. Only what he needed. His hat was also his cooking pot and the pan kept the sun and the rain off his head. Then he could wash up and have the food ready to go wherever he went. He was barefoot as he traveled and he lived, lived outside most of his born days. He could live off the land without things to slow him on his travels. Johnny would go into town to trade for supplies. He carried a sack of apple seeds on his back. He knew all the ways of the forest and the secrets of the apple seeds. How to plant it, how to grow it, and how to harvest the apple seeds. Why, one time, Johnny could show others how not only to store the apple seeds, but also how to make the foods out of those apple seeds after they were grown. Nobody except one of his giant friends, like Paul Bunyan, could eat a whole tree of apples all at the same time, or maybe all of his friends from town. What a bellyache that would be. Johnny was a hero, too. Why, once, Johnny saved several dozen people right here in Ohio when he ran for help. Miles and miles away in the forest, during the War of 1812. After thanking him many times over, they asked him, weren't you scared of all the animals that were in the forest? Asked the settlers. Some would say he could talk to animals and the plants. Weren't you scared? Why, the forest and the outdoors are my home. Why would I be scared? I know them like the back of my hand, replied Johnny. One time as Johnny Appleseed traveled through Ohio, he came across a familiar town he always stopped by for trading supplies. Johnny walked in and noticed there wasn't a soul in sight. Land sakes, where is everyone, exclaimed Johnny. He saw the barbershop shaving cream dropped on the floor, and as he walked by the bakery, there were hot muffins fresh from the oven spilled onto the stove. Without a clue, everyone had vanished off the face of the earth. Johnny exclaimed, well, I'll be hornswoggled if I didn't know better. I'd just say everyone just ran off somewheres. And it had to happen not too long ago because everything is just as if they were still here. Suddenly, Johnny heard a low growling sound. It kept getting louder and louder. The ground started to rumble and to shake. And it all became really clear, along with why all the town folks had disappeared. It was a giant bear that had come into view. Larger than any bear Johnny had ever seen. He was so large, he was at least 100 feet tall and just as wide. Johnny noticed the bear had one paw bent forward, cradling it like it was injured. The bear was something fierce to behold as he bellowed out. Why, that bear is all riled up and angry because he's hurt, said Johnny. So Johnny called on some of his friends, the great birds and some tiny honeybees for help. The bees carried their hive to Johnny. The giant bird scooped up Johnny and the beehive and flew him right up to that bear's face. Johnny looked the bear in the eyes and stared him down, just like his old friend Daniel Boone had taught him. Only Johnny winked and grinned. The bear was in a trance, and Johnny lured him down to where the honey sat. He set the hive close to the ground, and while the bear licked the honey, he reached over to the hurt paw, and sure enough, there was an entire thorn bush stuck in the bear's paw. 
Johnny reached out with his walking stick and pried out as much of the bush as he could, and Johnny's bird friends helped carry away the thorns. Thanks, friends, for the lift, the honey and everything, Johnny exclaimed. That bear was in no more pain, thanks to Johnny, and unbeknownst to him, he had just made a friend for life. The giant bear would follow Johnny Appleseed all the rest of his born days. The town hurrayed and hollered when they saw the giant bear leave. They gave Johnny a big party in his honor. All were happy except the Ants Brothers. Well, the Ants Brothers, ignore an Arog Ants, they were fit to be tied because Johnny saved the whole town from the giant bear without even firing a single shot. You see, they both tried to shoot the bear, but they were so scared and shaky. that their rifles fell apart. Then they said to each other, we're gonna get that Johnny Appleseed, sneak up on him, take his clothes and boil him in his pan he wears on his head and roll him down that hill. Somewheres, said the Ants brothers, ignore an Arog Ants, were born ignorant, and they've been losing ground ever since. They followed Johnny all the way out of town through the woods. They crept through the woods on each side of Johnny. They thought they were quiet as a mouse. But Johnny could hear them coming a mile away. At the same time, they both tried to rope Johnny. Instead, they roped each other, and pulling on the rope, knocked their own heads together. Darnation, boys, what a headache you just gave yourselves. Can you tell me what this is all about, asked Johnny. We're going to get you, Appleseed Johnny, exclaimed Ignorance. That's Johnny Appleseed, you dummy, said Arog to Ignorance. Boys, that's not a good idea. Johnny warned them. He warned them three times, but they still kept on coming. They didn't know that the giant bear was right behind them. Don't attack me, boys, or the bear's going to get you, warned Johnny. Horse feathers, there ain't no bear, said Ignorance. Roar, the, war, the bear roared. The brother's hair turned white and raised straight up. And then they rolled over the hill, down in the holler, never to be seen again. And Johnny thanked the giant bear, and together they roamed the forest for the rest of their born days.